generic greetings and welcome back once again to where ships conquer the skies. Today's beverage is ah, cranberry juice, very nice indeed. So in a previous video of uh, ships, we were once again designing and fighting and specifically designing the ABBA airship. We go over to open design and open the ABBA. You can see we have one, two, three, four aerial torpedoes and the guided missile, which means that it is a relatively inexpensive at 2,652 generic for currency, a long range bombardment airship, which has got a very low service ceiling and it's actually not very fast, but it just turns up on the map and then shoots long range at the target, which is pretty good. It was quite successful and quite useful, and we're going to be doing something similar to this. Now, I think my favorite weapon in the game is the aerial torpedo. I just really like the look of them when they launch and they do a very good amount of damage specifically they do let's have a quick look a blast damage of 160 and a distance of seven meters so pretty good and the disadvantage is obviously they are a slow moving thing that can be intercepted and such however that isn't really a big concern against the static structures that we are going to face off against now i did check back at all of the previous saves that i currently have there might be ones quite older than maybe sort of five years on or whatever um that we may have lost in the annals of time but if we go over to land ship and open the design all of these land ships here none of them really have a lot of torpedoes we have one there with three torpedoes we have one with i think five but we've made these very tall things like the encroacher there and the uh, corrector which is basically a very tall vessel and that has well in that case that's got acid spitters that's got the big cannons Keep working all the way around. There is the immoderate. What's that armed with? Oh, that's suspendium cannons. And then we have the leads, which has got four of these torpedoes. So basically, looking down all of them, we don't have anything that's really heavily stacked with lots and lots of torpedoes. And that's hopefully what we're going to try and build in this video. We have checked through the legacy as well, where we've got some of the older stuff and there's nothing in there. So let's go over to our weapons and down to the aerial torpedo. And we're going to place a couple of them in there. And you can see we are leaving some gaps for basically explosions. One, two, three, four, five. So that's ten of them there. Now we have to be aware of the when they're fighting see we have these different arcs here so we have to make sure that we will be able to fire them at the target now we have the minimum arc of fire there in fact what i'll do is remove these so we can see the arc uh, the arc sloping down there so realistically if we're quite aware where these should still work i want to build something around about around about the sort of two grand uh, sorry uh, three and a half grand sort of area but we'll see how we get on with that one anyway those are now in let's go over to our uh, resources here and then to the ammo store and then ammo stores are going to be placed in like so and then we want to go to basic corridor with ladder and then we're going to just ladder up all the way down there and then ladder up all the way uh, along there as well in fact what i might do is remove this one and place it a bit further back and we've got this separation for explosions so if we go over to our overlays and to explosion damage you can see that yes these might disappear but at least we've placed uh, some of these in i also i'm going to place i think from where is it it's in resources we want to have a fire extinguisher and we could actually place them right down the center if we wanted to like that how much of the fire extinguishers they are 12 whereas these things uh, 10 I believe uh, it is corridor with ladder corridor with ladder is seven oh, so there's a little bit more expense on that one what I'll do then is re remove the ones at the back and then I'll replace those with the fire extinguisher ones because those are the bits that are most likely going to be uh, set on fire anyway we can't give commands to the ship and we've got nowhere to move it so let's go over to our propulsion and I'm just gonna place some large tracks in and that would technically be okay, but let's go ahead and instead go for, say, small tracks or standard tracks. And that, by all accounts, <laughs> would still work. But we want to go with armor and we want to go with steel armor and probably heavy steel armor. And that says it's, may, uh, it's very, it says it's heavy and may have difficulty moving well that's not really a concern for me we just sit at the back that's the whole point in this thing so instead then i'll go for tracks i'll remove those tracks i'll place some tracks in the front there and then a little bit further back actually you know what i'm gonna move them down 
just a tiny bit. We'll go to resources, if I can find it, and then we'll have in a small coal store, which is going to connect those two up. And now we need a way to connect everything up in the center here so this is going to come down to there this one will do the same thing and then that's the exact right gap for me to place in some quarters one two three four and recommended crew is 42 current crew is 48 we are sadly yeah it's heavy and has difficulty moving it is overweighted on this one so we may have to either go for three sets of tracks or we'll check the We'll check what the cheapest one is. So propulsion, large tracks is 730, whereas three tracks is 210. So we're talking 630 as opposed to 730. Um, oh no, sorry, large tracks, I was looking at legs, is 680. Whereas medium legs, what's the what's the propulsion? 1,100, whereas tracks is, oh, 3,050. So actually medium legs, are they better? No, it can't be. Medium legs, 1,100 propulsion. Whereas tracks, 350 propulsion. Hmm. Could we go with two? We could. It just seems to be not the way forward. Whereas that job done sadly it's expensive very expensive we're already on four grand as well so we're over the points cost that i wanted to go with originally what's the best way of cheaping this out could remove some of the fire extinguishers and put them all together but if we get an ammo explosion in one of these then the whole thing's going to go up so i'd rather not do that <laughs> for hopefully obvious reasons uh, one two three of those would go in that would give us the required lift, but the problem is they're quite small tracks, and for the cost of a large tracks, they're just better. So, large tracks, it probably is. We have the right amount of crew, but we don't have any coal, and we can't give commands to the ship. So we'll sort that out. Let's go ahead and add in... Probably... What do we want to go with in command and crew? I'm tempted by just a, a. I'm tempted by a bridge. I think also a cockpit can go there. Do we need a telescope for accuracy? A telescope would be nice. And also a crow's nest, because that stacks. A little bit more expense, but 40% extra accuracy. It's not bad at all. It's also very expensive now. More expensive than I thought. But we're going to keep going. And we just need a bit of coal. And is that it? I think a bit of coal. Followed by a supply hatch. I don't really care about how much coal realistically because it's not going to move. Small coal store can go on the back there. And then steel cargo door there just under 5,000 much more expensive than I thought all right well let's put some angles on it and we'll see what it's like we'll see what it's like how many guns we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve hopefully with enough ammo to support those but I have a feeling that we might need more ammo if we were to put more ammo on how much would that bring it up to uh, it'd be an extra 500. Right. What about armor then? What if we strip it down to steel armor rather than heavy steel armor? That massively reduces the cost of it. I'm going to go with that. So we've removed some of the armor, stripped some of the armor off, and oh, I realized that actually those don't connect. Those don't actually do anything. <laughs> they don't go anywhere, do they? Right. They're, sort of point they're completely pointless. Right, uh, let's remove all of these then. And we'll place that up to there. Yeah, that's worrying that that's the only way to access that. Because if one of these gets chipped off, the whole thing's going to collapse. So I could... Um, 
Solid shapes. Could put filler blocks in, but I think instead we'll just have struts that connect all of those up. Yes, that makes a bit more sense. And that seems to be all right. Okay, solid shapes. We'll go to this uh, slope here. We'll have that sloping up to that side. Uh, flip it round. Do the same on... Ah, well, obviously we can't place one there because it's in front of that, but... That seems to fit in. This one we can flip around and place there. And that seems to be... That seems to be it. Alright. Um, what I would like... But I don't know if it would work out. These are three, these struts. I would like... Um, a bit more... A bit better look on this one. Move these... Connect them up like so, so it's a straight way down. And then on the front, and this is just for aesthetic purposes, you understand. We'll place these bits in there. Does that look good or is that just silly? Well, for a start, it's more expensive, but that doesn't massively concern me. Hmm. I like the sort of almost launch ramp look that it gets when it's got these spikes on. I actually quite like that size of it as well. We've got accessible struts. Accessible by crew for a platform. Hmm. Well, that looks better. It's also a bit more... I was going to say a bit more secure. More or less... I think less fragile is a, is a better term. Alright, we're going to go with that one. Uh, so we need a name. Uh, we'll call it the Wellington. Save design. Save. Leave that, combat, and let's see what this is like. Wellington can go right at the back, like so, on them trees ready to crush everything. Building, once again, land fortress. Just We're just going to put it against the land fortress to see what it is like to start with, and see what happens. So I'll start the fight, immediately I'm going to put it on aimed fire. This will obviously crush down. And sit there. And there is the incoming shots. But all gunners aim fire. Yep. Yeah. And there goes our torpedoes out. So that should be a full salvo of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 torpedoes. Uh, we're actually slowly moving back, which is strange. But that also didn't sound good. Let me just have a quick look and see what happened there. What have we lost? Uh, oh, we've lost a strut. We've, we've lost one of the ramming prow things. I'm going to say move to there to see how fast it is. And, oh, it actually moved quite quick there. Just from that very small test. But here comes our aerial torpedoes in. Hopefully, we'll do some considerable damage on the first volley. Because we need to really take out a lot of their firepower straight away. Good hit in the middle there. Followed by ones on the front. We've taken... Oh, yeah. That's taken a lot of this stuff off. So, we've got lots of secondary explosions going. And that's... We really couldn't have asked for more. We've completely removed the front of the structure. Not only that, they've lost all of the forward-facing cannons and the large turret on the top, and they've lost some sponsons in the centre. So this is good. We're also now doing a second volley here, which is hitting right in the centre and chewing through it massively. Their firepower is now probably under half, which is excellent. In terms of ammo, we've only used... Um, we've used a sixth. So, almost nothing, in fact, con considering the amount of damage we've inflicted here. That is... that is very lucky, I'll be honest. That is very, very lucky that we've done this. But let's uh, pause it and go to the left-hand side and see what state our vessel's in. Because that's actually probably more important than the state theirs is. And, oh, we have taken some damage. Not, not uh, a huge amount of damage, but it's not also insubstantial. And there's the torpedoes going out. I'm very glad I put on those torpedoes and the crow's nest as well. Sorry, the uh, telescope and the crow's nest. And the same torpedoes were racing each other there. <laughs> I can't believe we've chewed it down to that size. There's nothing left of it, practically. Okay, that was a good fight. Let's try that again. So, building. The land fortress. Once again, we're going to place that in here. We're also going to go over to a building and to the white lookout, which we'll place in there. Total cost, 4,598. We'll add in our land ship right down to the bottom. And we'll put in the 
Hang on. Land ship. I was going to say, where is it there? The Wellington, which... Oh, at least we can do that. Uh, fairly flat ground, this you can see. Start the fight, immediately aimed fire. And then there goes the shots out. So we are fighting away. I'm going to tell this to move further back as well. So I'll move back to there. You can see that the speed is... Not bad. It's 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 good enough. It's good enough, and there's also some good shots out as well. Now I haven't told it to fire at any particular target, so we'll have to go and check to see what is shooting at us. I also realise that I haven't got, although we've got fire extinguishers, we haven't got any way to repair the vessel, so we haven't got any tools or anything like that. We also don't have any way to heal crew, so we are simply here to do as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time and hope that our armour protectors rather than being a, you know, an extended fight. That's something we can't do. Uh, it looks like we've actually split the defence in, in twin, which is good. And it looks like there's going to be some more explosions on the front here, which is, yeah, that's pretty much decimated this thing. Now what I'm also going to do then is target the front one this time because I think the damage that we need to do on this is pretty much been done. I'd rather t get a couple of hits on this and hopefully take that out as well. But let's see, because some of the shots coming in are still targeting this old one here. And yeah, they've completely destroyed that bit at the front there. That is so much damage. I wonder if that's going to go for the back. No. You saw them there? They actually got shot. They actually exploded midair, I think, with, the, uh, with these things shooting at them. They might have been. Um, but we're now aiming for... Oh, yeah. That's some good hits. That's very good hits. Now we're aiming for the one at the front here. We've already taken off a lot of their cannons. And they're going to lose all their cannons in short order. Right, there's their cannons gone. Uh, I guess I'll just target the one at the back here because, quite frankly, four rifles, I'm not particularly worried about at this range with the armor that we have. <laughs> and we've still got torpedoes coming in that are doing a huge amount of damage. A huge amount of damage. And some of them are exploding up there. I think the ones that exploded around this area were just originally targeting something that was there. And we've still got these ones coming in. That's the disadvantage of these things. They are Their flight time is poor. But I don't particularly care when they hit and do that amount of damage. Let's go back then and see what state our vessel is in. Uh, judging by the amount of fire we've got going, it's probably going to be in a fairly decent state. Let's go to outside view here. And that's a victory, and that's barely any damage at all. Okay, once again, over to combat. Let's go to a snowy night this time, because we can. Actually, that terrain's a bit a bit boring, isn't it? That's a bit boring as well. Let's get some... No, I just want some, like, undulation, at least, on this thing. And that's that's nice. That's much better. So, a snowy night, add in building, and let's massively overgun it. So, they're going to have two land fortress... Fortresses? Fortrises? Fortresses, there yeah, fortress, and land ship down at the bottom over to the Wellington, and we'll click start and aim and fire. Wellington, obviously something you can walk in when it's uh, quite wet and rainy and muddy, and also um, a food that you can eat too. Normally beef. Oh, and obviously it's a place in New Zealand, uh, I think. <laughs> anyway, it uh, looks like shots are now being sent. I think that would be the correct term. And sadly, I fear that we may have bitten off more than we can chew. But the torpedoes, once again, have been very, very good to us. We've taken out the turret on here as well as set some fires. Lots of secondary explosions around here. They've lost some cannons. They've lost a couple of sponsons. There's more secondary explosions. We've got fires in the top here. Once again, haven't told them to fire on any particular point. They're just doing whatever they can. Um, I'm just waiting to see. Yeah, it looks like they're now targeting one at the back. So the... The crew decided that after targeting, they're basically going to target against the most uh, valuable target, or rather the most, yeah, I guess the most valuable target would be the right one. It's the target that is doing the most damage, certainly. So they are targeting, after they've taken the most guns off the front one, they're now targeting the rear one. And... <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, they've they've taken a huge chunk out of that one. So that was basically two, perhaps three volleys. Let me go back and see what state we're in. I have no doubt that we've taken some damage. We have taken damage, but all we've lost is these pointy bits on the front. Wow. This thing is super effective. Admi admittedly, this is limited sample set. It's only the third test we've had. But against these things, you would have thought that realistically, if there was something that was going to outdo us, it would be these. They're on 6,400-ish points. So they're almost 2,000 points more than what we have. For 2,000 points, we could get a, a winter tank. Or we could get well, anything under 2,000 points. There's lots of stuff. Mini tanks, uh, ray vessels, all sorts of things. But I would put it to you that why would you want any of that when you can have these when they do uh, that sort of thing? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. That's uh, what we wanted to see. Okay. I wonder how it fares against multiple smaller stationary structures. Now, obviously the inevitable is going to come back and say, well, actually, I think you'll find boarding would be able to destroy this thing. Also, aircraft. Or bombing or pretty much anything well yes that is true but this thing was not made to fight those things this thing was made solely as a long-range bombardment system similar to the ABBA that we made in the previous video that was uh, a similar sort of setup four aerial torpedoes and one guided missile and very low service ceiling you know decent armor whereas this thing is just a sort of evolution of that it's on the ground this time so we don't have to worry about falling out of the sky, even though we fell to ground in the previous vessel, so we never had that problem anyway. But because of that, we've gone with heavier armour. And that's a victory. Okay, combat. Uh, let's go with a dawn fight, maybe? Rainy night? Eh, we'll go for... No, we'll go with rain. Why not? Uh, or snow. Snow's nice. So, building. This time, we are going to do... Where is it? Uh, the dark cube, the flying fortress, snow... I think the white lookout, actually. One, two, three, four. Mm. There's f three of them. We'll go with possibly one more. Yeah. And then land ship. Wellington. Start. Aim to fire. And send it. Let's see what happens. So once again, they are targeting whatever they feel is the right thing for them to target. We'll have a little zoom in and see them launching all the torpedoes. And you can actually see the, the build them as well now. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see that they take them, like they build them from the back over. So we'll watch this one fire and we'll see it getting built. So this one will be sell. Yep. And then they put in the housing, the engine. And then I think they put the, the, the last thing they put in is the warhead. Uh, damage is fairly sub uh, oh yeah it's fairly substantial actually on this thing now naturally we are taking oh that's air control you can turn it on or off no uh, we are taking a fairly decent amount of damage but let's see what damage we've managed to cause so we've got some racers here uh, oh yes we've caused fairly good damage on this first target so it looks like they are now retargeting and are shooting the one just behind the forward one and damage is good damage is very good indeed we've got three of the cannons out chipping away at the bottom looks like the top's just fallen off causing a secondary explosion so that's all of the cannons gone on the second one which means they're almost certainly going to be targeting now further back over uh, a lot of these ones coming in will have been sent before we had that damage but there is again loads of marks <laughs> i mean it's ridiculous isn't it this is brilliant <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, this is... They're a little bit more expensive, but not too much. However, I fear... The noise I've just heard there, which is probably very difficult to make out during this bombastic session, I think we've taken some damage. And I mean, like, lost modules. 
Yeah, yeah, I think you could say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did hear in the background some noise indicating that something was breaking and falling apart. Well, that's exactly what's happened. Luckily, although we've lost all motive power and we don't have connections between the top half and bottom, the bottom is now classed as out of action, but the top is still in play because we've caught that bridge there. <laughs> so that can still stay in the fight. So technically, we're probably going to lose this. But then again, then again, you never know. I mean, yes, we've lost... You know, we, we can't move. So if this was in a campaign setting, we would not be able to... We would not be able to carry on with that vessel. It would just be classed as destroyed, immobile. But, here's the thing. If its sole objective was to simply do as much damage as possible to the enemy's defences... I've just had some more explosions to the left. I think that's going to be us. Um, then I think that's mission accomplished. Like, the amount of damage we've caused is brilliant. And there it goes. That's just been split in two. And I have a feeling that we've lost all weapons. Oh, no, there's one torpedo coming out. I'm guessing the rest, though. There's another one going out. I can hear it. I think we've only got one weapon, though. Yeah, we've got one weapon left. <laughs> one weapon. And it says technically no ammo, but I think they do still have ammo. Uh, also, six crew out of the 48. We can... Why is it focused on moving? It should, it should be focused on firing. And <laughs> there's more damage there, but I can hear explosions to the left. So this is going to be a loss, I think. Yeah, there's a defeat. A mobile. They're all survived, and one of them's got no ammo. Survived, yeah, technically they did, but I think that could be a very easy mop-up. All right. I think we'll leave it there. Um, I don't think we really need to see much more of our of our Wellington there. That is effective. It's exactly it does exactly what I wanted it to do, which is sit back, long range, and bombard. Is there any um, efficiencies to be made in it? Yes. I've just realised I could probably move that back there, but doing that would mean they can't move down that way and across. Does it really matter? Um, no, it really doesn't. So I can I can do that and save myself a little bit of money. Would I want to put something else on here? Um, let's have a look. Command and crew. We could put an observation dome on the top. Observation dome is 118 generic units of currency. Increases weapon accuracy by 15%, whereas the crow's nest is 20 and it's 10 percent but it doesn't stack with crow's nest so we'd have to remove that and then we'd have to put the observation dome on the top there i am not i'm probably not going to do that because for the it's an extra it's an extra hundred almost for only five percent additional accuracy whereas the telescope is 126 but it's 30 percent accuracy so the observation dome over the crow's nest i don't think it is worth it cost wise but then again, perhaps there's some argument to be made on that one. How much... Is that extra 5% worth 100? I don't know. We also haven't got any... What other weapons that we could possibly put on? I think anything else would just be bloat, quite frankly. We could even potentially remove some ammo and, and cheapen up that way. Maybe remove that ammo and that ammo and just have it connected up. That would save us another couple of hundred but then again do we need to do that i don't think so i think we've managed to hit on uh, a good a good one there um just looking at things like aircraft we don't need any command decks on maintenance bays we could potentially have a small repair bay we've got a repair bay here and we also have a is it in command and crew yeah we also have a sick bay. So that would be 300. Do you want to place those? I mean, that would be, say, 300... No, uh, 38 there. And resources. Some repair bay. Putting those in would cost us an extra 70-odd. But we would gain the ability to repair the vessel and... 
also heal people. I mean, that's the sick bay. And that's the repair bay. Recommends a bit more crew. So we could go with berths. Berth in there. Berth in there. A little bit more crew than originally uh, required. But could just do that. And that would that would work. That would work. I'm going to save that because I think that would be a better one and the, the price is negligible. What would happen if we put extra armor on it? Heavy steel armor. Take it up to 5,177 as opposed to 4,569. What's the difference? Um, HP, we have an increase of 40. That's really good. Weight is double, but we don't care about that particularly. Absorbs 24 blast damage as opposed to 16. And absorbs 12 piercing as opposed to 6. So, what's that? A third more on the blast, but double piercing for the heavy steel armor. It doubles the weight, but it only increases the cost by a little bit. Uh, yeah, save the design. Save, yes. I'm not going to test it out. I might have ruined it. I might have completely ruined that by adding those extra modules on and increasing that because we've added another 600 to the cost. But when you think about it, <laughs> we managed to face off against two of those, which together is 6,000... 400, uh, well, nearly, it's nearly 500 actually, isn't it? It's 6,492. So, yes, yeah, so nearly 6,500. So, I need to say, Wellington could punch well above its weight. <laughs> Pretty good. Anyway, we're going to leave it there for this episode of Airships Conquer the Skies. If you have any suggestions for changes, alterations, or even just new designs, by all means, drop them in the comments there. To answer the inevitable, yes, we will eventually go back and do a conquest campaign. I'm just, at the moment, happy messing around, playing with these different designs, and um, I'm hoping to see the uh, diplomacy stuff getting dropped in before we do that, but not ruling it out. Either way, hope you have enjoyed this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.